OGs turn to ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. <laughs> Navi's turn to ban. OG's turn to ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. <sighs> Navi's turn to ban. <sighs> OG's turn to pick. Night Stalker. Navi's turn to pick. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Navi's turn to pick. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Shall OG's turn to pick. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Navi's turn to ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. I'm sure we'll be able to explore and pick apart in a moment. But first, Draft needs to get on your screens because it has been going down. The players just could not wait. And we're going to have to play catch up. So I will throw this to the desk. And it does seem like for the first time here in Moscow, IO has slipped the bands. Hmm. Hmm. But it's against Navi. <laughs> Ten first phase Navi bat. Get it. I mean, nice bat Rider and Nice Stalker is really good together. Vision, like Bad Rider needs Vision. He's a hero that lacks Vision and plays very well with Vision. Uh, I think we saw this from, uh, who was it? Uh, LGD FY yesterday, one of the games they had Bad Rider and Nice Talker. Uh, it was, yeah, it was actually against OG. Mm -hmm. They may be inspired by it. Ten seconds remaining. I mean, Night Stalker is really, really, like, really, really strong. We, we have Five gone through this discussion remaining. over and over again. This hero has gotten a significant buff. Uh, on his uh, Hunter in the Night, being an active spell now. Uh, and obviously the, the meta as well, shifting towards more, towards uh, a fighting, early, early fighting meta, which allows uh, heroes like Night Stalker to excel. And right now they're removing Legion Commander, one of uh, the heroes that can deal with the Bat Rider. Remove the Lasso. And oh, there goes all the Illusion heroes. Can they win with other heroes? Please, that they're still Alk. There's still Arc Manta, Warden. Manta style's not banned, man. Come on. <laughs> CK with 
with ags also not banned. CK is CK with good. ags. Hmm. <laughs> so we get, we're, we're really pulling at the uh, straws here. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I'm a little unsure about the troll right now. Um, like yeah. we pointed out, definitely needs a lot of farm. I wouldn't say it's amazing against Batrider. I wouldn't say it's amazing against Night Stalker. It's okay against Night Stalker, I guess, but just not completely sold on the hero, and definitely not on the first phase, unless they have some kind of combo that they, they're prepping for it. I mean, Night, Night Stalker, in a way, you kind of can own the troll really hard if you're fear, and if you get, like, Solar Crest, like, a, a lot of things that can make it really hard for the troll to do DPS in, in the team fights. And like we mentioned earlier, this hero needs to farm a lot, and Bat Rider and Night Stalker are heroes that are very fast tempo. You don't really need too much to get going. They're going to keep running at you, controlling the vision, and they're not going to allow you to farm easily. I like the Nyx and Legion bands. Those are basically just set up heroes for the IO relocate. And counters towards Bat Rider as well. Yeah. You, you don't want to play <laughs> Bat Rider against uh, Nyx especially. I think it's so difficult to play Bat Rider against Nyx. You need a BKB, you, you need to skip your 4 staff. So yeah, one of the more difficult heroes for Bat Rider to deal with. Keeping the bats safe. One more ban for Na'Vi. Is it, really, it going to be another... You, you say all the illusions have been taken away, all the illusion mm -hmm. heroes. Gotta wait for some picks first. That's true. Uh, I mean, right now, if you really want to deal with uh, the Bat Rider, there's still Venge, uh, Venge support. If you really want to have a save. I mean, they do have the relocate already to deal with uh, the Lasso. Like if they want more to protect their carries, because like sometimes you see teams when they they deal with Bat Rider, they make sure that they have at least one or at least one or two heroes that can stop the lasso. Like it counters the bat, but it doesn't push lanes well enough, oh, I don't think. Geez, and it also will leave them really weak in ganks. So I, I, get, I think Rubik's a better pick here. It's something that they like a lot. Uh, I remember they run this hero a lot on. Uh, I think Biver is the player. Uh, yeah, he's the one that plays the Rubik. They like to put him on their hero. It's very like. I think we talk about Rubik sometimes not being... I think it was the Clutch, yeah, Clutch Gamers ran it yesterday and we had a discussion where sometimes Rubik, you don't feel his presence in the game hmm. because there's not many useful spells that you can steal. And it seems like right now, if you talk about useful spells, there are, I mean, a few, but not really like, oh, a good Rubik game. Like, a good Rubik game generally... What does it look like? You, you have like a Weaver, Earthshaker, a Jack Hero. Right? Enigma. Yeah. Hunter, maybe. Yeah, all those. Yeah. But the thing with Rubik is like uh, it provides the early game rotations with uh, the setup because Rubik Lift is uh, instant instant cast. It's very easy to set up for your team. And right now, if you're laning Rubik plus Troll together, the lane is still pretty solid overall. Yeah, they'll get extra right clicks, I guess, if, especially if they have mobility advantage. So yeah. They can do stuff, but I feel like they can also be pressured easily because Rubik kind of sucks level 1 sometimes um, if yeah, it's like a dual lane. Do much. Like if it's a Night Stalker plus Bat Rider. That could be problematic for the Rubik troll. Might need the Aryo down there to help them out, but they go back for the Clockwork, which you seem that no one picked up earlier. Clockwork, mm, right now it's more or less this is their offlaner because they already have the Rubik and the Aryo. Pretty okay against uh, Dazzle, I would say, because in a team fights, when you're playing against Dazzle, you want someone that can actually go to the back line and stop him from casting the grave on his teammates. Clockwork is one of the easier ones to do that. You can set up for relocate stuff too. It's just a little bit harder. So yeah, that, that's pretty useful too. I would say Navi's ability to secretly start fights is kind of hard, but... They're going to need like a dagger and a Rubik at some point. But the yeah. thing with Rubik plus uh, Wiz is like, you kind of want the... Wiz to be fatter than the Rubik. In, in some teams where they, they just like the Rubik, he's going to buy all the wards. Wiz is going to get all the items, and Rubik is going to, if he ever gets a dagger, it's going to be the team winning a heavy team fight. He's not going to get his dagger early. Interestingly enough, the first three drafted by OG are the exact roster we saw LFY beat them with yesterday. It's just, it's just safe it? to open Night Stalker. I assume they got first pick. Uh, Navi got first pick. They so picked the, they they picked the IO, and then and they went Batrider and Night Stalker. Okay. But yeah, Night Stalker, Batrider, and Dazzle. I think the Dazzle's good here, just because Navi has sort of weak damage, moderately weak damage right now. The clock is decent at it, Rubik's okay, yeah. Troll can be okay, but if they have weak Disable, then uh, Dazzle's going to keep everybody alive. Yeah, they're actually just completely stealing LFY lineup. They, they got Dragon Knight yeah, right against was, yesterday. Was it, was it the exact same lineup? No, Dragon Knight was the first game, but yeah, this was, these were, all of these were used by LFY yeah. to beat I mean, them. Dazzle is something that uh, OG likes to run a lot before. They always have this setup where Jerax is on the initiating support, roaming support, and then yeah. Fly is on the defensive one. The Venge, the Dazzle, or whatever that can save a teammate. 
Dazzle's gonna be yeah, babysitting. Yeah, they have like a, I think, more balanced lineup. They have a early game ganker, they have a vision hero. Dra Dragonite is a power hitter slash tanker, they have an initiator, they have a saver. I think OG just finishes with like Earth Spirit or something like that, and then Rubik's gonna have like some of the, some really crappy spells. There's not that much for him to steal. Oh, they, they, they need a carry They now. need a safe, oh, yeah, safe lane. Nice stalker and Dazzle. Oh, Dazzle, that's their other support, my bad. They removed the Morphling. <sighs> don't think they've run it. Have they run it recently? I don't re recall it at mm. all. I've seen No-Tail do it once in the last like two or three months, Ten I think. Seconds remaining. And he did fine. Um, they, they have weak lockdown. They have weak damage. Five they need something really burst heavy for Navi's last pick, so I think OG just grabs... I mean, they already have a tower pusher with DK, so... OG's turn to pick. Maybe something Juggernaut. disable, carry, safe. Jug could work. Uh, I think if you want to push Juggernaut, probably okay for that. It helps them with the healing wall. It's not that easy to gank him, uh, because he has spin with the relocate. Oh, they go for the gyro. Oh, gyro please go eggs. Please. <laughs> please. I mean, he's, uh, he's kind of like a very fast-paced carry. Uh, he, mm -hmm. can, he comes online really quickly. He's very good at fighting early. He's pretty good in lane, too. Um, he's probably going to have to go BKB at some point. Because if he gets locked down by, like, Clock or Rubik, then Troll can kill him. But as long as he's always on the move, it should be fine. So that's the second uh, gyrocopter we've seen so far. It was actually the guys from the Philippines, Clutch Gamers, who brought it in first. Didn't quite work out for them. Maybe we'll see OG flex with it. And we saw, of course, Quap pulled in for the final pick. Oh, I'd say the OD ban. Predictions, though, gentlemen. What do we make of this one? We'll start at the end. Throw it over to Purge. What yeah. are you saying? Uh, I, I like the OG draft better. Um, I think the Quap was a good pick. It's the damage that they need. But I'm not sold on Navi winning with the lineup. I think it's a little too one-dimensional. Okay. No, I mean, so, so you're telling me, from a draft perspective exclusively, you, you do give the favor to OG as well? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I'd, I'm probably biased based on team strength, but, but sure. I, I like the OG draft better. How about you, Ben? I'm going to go with Navi. I think uh, IO is a hero that rarely slips through, and for good reason. I do think Navi is clearly the underdog in terms of team strength, but I think they have a better draft, and OG are experimenting a little bit more after getting dominated yesterday. I mean, it is clear, clearly experimentation. We've just seen that they're almost mirroring both what they lost to LFY yeah. and what CG dabbled with with the gyro. What are you saying, Winter? I like Night Stalker. You're a fan, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. OG. Okay. One for Night Stalker and two for OG with one in the middle. A little sandwich from Merlini. And now we do have a casting sandwich for you. It's quite a tasty one. We do have Mr. Pixel standing by with Fog. It's going to be awesome. Thank you very much, Alex. Indeed, we're getting ourselves ready for the second series over on the mainstream here today. OG versus Na'Vi. I'm Odie Pixel. I'm here with Fog. We've just seen the drafts. I think you were kind of saying to me, you, you were kind of on what, what Purge's thought train was, when you, you overall draft of Navi you didn't really like, but you feel that the Quap was a, a yeah. good way to end it. Yeah, I think the Quap gives them a lot of like lane security. Like, they can actually really dominate this DK with Seneco and Dendi. I think that that's probably what they're going to try to emphasize on doing. But while they do that, I think that Pycat's actually going to suffer quite a bit. I do believe that the Batrider, Night Stalker kind of interaction versus Troll Warlord is very difficult, not only in the lane, but throughout majority stages of the game. Like Winter mentioned, the uh, crippling fear coming out from the Night Stalker versus Troll really hurts him, giving him that miss rate. And then Batrider just suffering his turn rate and just that heavy magic damage kind of orientation versus Troll Warlord is very strong. So in that incorporation as well with like the gyrocopter and kind of the way that OG drafted, I think it's like very hard. Troll Warlord doesn't want to build the BKB too early, but it almost is like if this gyro just starts running at you and just like sieging your towers, you can't really like fight into him too well. Yeah, for so. sure. And also something you, pick, you were pointing out to me that's worth noting is uh, the, the fact that even though General's on the clock, and this is an incredibly strong here at the moment, there, there are many ways for OG to play around it. They've got, they've got two heroes that can fly. Yeah. Batrider, Night yeah. Stalker. Like, it used to be like uh, Clockwork was pretty good versus Night Stalker, yeah. but ever since with the Hunter and the Knight that you'd be able to kind of fly over it, it kind of like goes the other way now because he hooks and you just fly away. Batrider, same kind of thing. However, Clockwork used to be a very good hero versus Gyrocopter because Gyro has a lot of damage that kind of you can't stop from happening. So if Clockwork gets an early blade mail and he gets on top of the Gyro, that's where we can see actually a lot of power coming through it. So it's pretty much like how much can General and Dendi punish the laning phase to make space for PyCat? That's pretty much what I'm looking at for them. And Dendi, to start with, will have the backup of Seneco on that IO, and of course, that IO pick being one that Na'Vi are very comfortable with. Seneco, incredibly strong on the hero, and uh, already, of course, in, the, in this mid lane matchup, Anna is not going to have an easy time, even if it was just the 1v1. Uh, does that the backup of Jarex himself now? We'll go in with a bit of harassment there with the Void. 
Drops down the ward. Oh, nice. he actually gets the... He takes out the obs from Navi. So he gets the double tango regen onto Ana. And now they don't have that high ground vision. So OG has a little bit of a vision advantage in the lane. No. And bottom lane. Already starting to get a little bit sticky here for Pycat. Five stacks on him. And uh, he has to respect that. Backs himself away. This is kind of the fear factor. Playing Troll Warlord versus a Batrider when you're not putting like a tri lane versus him. You just get stacked up. You have to be pretty careful that. However, Pycat did start with a uh, magic stick. So at least he's got those charges coming for him. Uh, mid lane. Again, jump four from Denzi. To bring Anna down. Trying to harass him right back. The Shadow Strike is going to tick him down. Uh, tick him down fairly low. Uh, but he will be fine. Still holding on to the south. Jerex now looking for a bit of a turnaround play as he goes in onto Suneco. And yeah, Anna just having to hang back whilst that ticks it down. Now he'll salve up. And still CS as it is. Even between the Quap and the DK. And in fact, Anna's got a nice... Uh, Big wave actually, no, sorry, going to the way of Dendi. So Dendi will have a chance to, to get himself a bit of a lead with this uh, double wave that's coming in on mid. On top of the pools being made, General, halfway through level two at the moment. He's uh, also getting a little bit of CS on this top lane. By doing his best, though, to, to make sure that he gets out on top off the back of these side pools. So Seneco kind of changed up the build. He had the bottle queued up originally, but he actually bought uh, boots and a salve just to be able to stand in the lane a little bit better with Dendi versus this Night Stalker just so he doesn't have to worry about the gap closing. So different approach. And the boots also help you like walk away from the lane and stack over and over again, which looks like which he's trying to emphasize on doing. He does have one stack for Dendi coming out. And Jarex being a nuisance, coming over, stealing the bounty ring here from General. As their General taunts him on his way out. Uh, safe lane farm, as it is. Uh, the slight edge for the gyro, I guess. And, and this is pretty much expected, really, as, as you mentioned, just down to, to what each carry has to deal with in terms of enemy offlaner in their lane. Yeah. As far actually got himself an arcane rune. He's getting engaged on toward bottom, but being able to stack up those stickies just a little bit faster, it deters Navi from really trying to go for anything. I'm talking about stacking Suneko in the jungle. He's making it happen here for Na'Vi. Already got a double. Now look to bring that up to a triple. One on lane, S4. Looking to use the, the last bit of that Arcane Ring to make a bit of a go. Pycat, he's got four stacks on him. He's in a lot of trouble. Jarax slowing down here with the Void. OG looking for their first, but they'll get it's it. They may even get a second. Biver ticking down low. Double kill for S4. Beautifully done there, back to base, and that lane is turning into a bit of a nightmare for Na'Vi. Getting the literal best rune possible for the Batrider in the laning phase, and him just being versus a dual lane. You know, that's kind of the nature of what's going to happen when you're playing versus that. He also actually had... Does that actually block the pull? Yeah, so they also block the pull down bottom as well, so he's able to just know that they can't really pull, so he just sits in the lane and can e easily contest the Troll Warlord. Every time he walks up, get a couple... Couple stacks, a couple sticky stacks on him. Nice rotation though from Jarex to yeah, guarantee really that kind of kill. Ah, uh, yeah, just utilizing the power of those two. I mean, they they know with those two heroes they can run at that safe lane, and there's very little that the Navi can do between a troll and a Rubik to stop the mid lane. Anna will look to remove the clarity from Dendi. Dendi turns back around with the shadow strike. So have to be careful out of the regen at the moment. There's actually a regen rune up top, so this will be beautiful if Dendi finds it. And indeed, he will. Or is he waiting for the bottle first, or? I think he's waiting for the Wisp bottle, the oh, okay. IO bottle, yeah. Yeah, wait for the IO to get that. Yeah, I guess, Sineko's unless he didn't quite see moves. that. I mean, I assume he did see that when he no, hit it. Yeah, Sineko's booking it toward yeah. that as fast as possible. You got to get that regen rune in your pockets. There we go. That's a that's a very nice rune. That's like probably yeah. the best rune for IO. Mid yeah. lane, Ana getting gone on. And in fact, we have the spirits coming in. This could be a kill, and it is. Dendi and Sineko. The team does it. And this middle lane, Anna's still been finding the CS, but he's got to be careful now. What, level 4, nearly level 5 on Dendi. This is the point where there is a lot of killing potential for this Queen of Pain on the DK. Yeah. And uh, we may see some more kind of support backup sit back around the mid lane already. You know, Flying Jarrett's coming in. They are going to go for the smoke up. Looks like they're going to make the B line down for the bottom lane. Punish they, the troll. Yeah, yeah. They, they saw how it could potentially easy it was with S4's play last time. They know that they can try and go for the two kills again. S4 is level 5 already. Like, he is super overleveled yeah, in this offlane. He can put so much pressure on them. Viber looks like he's going to be ah, the culprit. He's absolutely gone. Void, Crippling Fear, and the Poison Touch. S4 coming in as well, but no, Seneco is there. 
Goes for the attempted save. OG are continuing to move in. Diving into the town. They'll get the Firefly over Biver. Take down one. S4 now on a killing spree. And Sineko's in trouble as well. Tried to come in to save his teammate. But he'll end up being another casualty as S4 picks up another. He is having the dream time. It was lying down on the bottom lane. Mid lane. Dendi comes in with a scream. I know with the Dragon Tail. Is it not fall? The very fire blink out. Dendi. He'll survive. Turns back around. Oh, he oh, tries he to dodge the brief fire. But it should be a kill for a kill. As Anna will... Will he take out as the regen? Yeah. No, he's gone. He is gone, the regen. Not enough there from the armor. General actually TP bottom as well, trying to help that kind of uh, aggression that was coming up from OG. So even more kind of wasted time on the side of Navi. And during all this, no tail is free farming. That was oh, huge yeah. actually That's... for Ana though. Ana getting yeah. that kill before the Queen of Pain gets it. Now he's pretty much even in level and farm. Just a little bit ahead for the Queen of Pain has to be expected. But your DK. This is, this is the kind of like the nature of the matchup. Queen of Pain should win, especially with the rotations too. And once DK oh. gets six, that's where the changeup happens. Bottom lane. you got General coming in with an Invis when he really wants to try and make something happen against S4. S4 does have the back of a Jerex. In fact, S4 and Jerex, they're the ones to go first. They go on to buy the General. He doesn't even come out of the Invis. He just doesn't... It feels like he didn't see a chance to go for something. Now he'll try and stop them from getting more. S4 does get low. Three stacks onto Pycat. Pycat now being back to by Seneco. S4 trying to use the last of this Firefly to get himself out across the trees. But Seneco with the ball slap. Takes him down. Bats out. So this time the backup from Na'Vi paying off. And they put an end to that pesky pesky S4's reign. Yeah, nice triple rotation. That good invis rune. The, the patience from general there. Yeah, course, really lose... holding on to it. Yeah. Yeah, they lose Biver, but yeah, yeah he, he <laughs> waits till they get under the tower and then he uses Cog. So yeah. that's a good play. Watching Rubik die, like, I'm, I can't save him. <laughs> it's for the greater good. Holding on, and indeed, it certainly was. Getting that S4 kill. I mean, it's something that's absolutely crucial because S4 is having a ridiculously good game at the moment. Still second on the net worth. Um, obviously, the other big problem, as you mentioned, is that gyrocopter, no tail, getting all the space in the world. Once he starts to move around with the rest of OG and look for the team fights, it, there's going to be that power spike that potentially could, could be hard for Navi to deal with. Yeah, he's gone for that like, phase drum build, so yeah. you can tell he's trying to get involved extremely early in this game. And their tower siege potential should be pretty good with the way that they can surround with the Dragon Knight. And mid lane, looks like OG were teasing with the, uh, the chance to go in onto Dendi. And uh, they will actually go for it here. But a uh, quick, quick blink out. Looks like they don't want to fully commit with the, the crippling fear and the dragon tail. Maybe not feeling it's going to be enough and still having to be aware of uh, where Seneco is on the map. As yeah, down in the jungle at the moment, they, they don't have vision on the IO and he could very well be there to turn it around. Because it is hard for OG to go, to go for those sort of aggressive moves close to the towers at this stage. Yeah, Jarek's I guess, during like that, the, the, the night time was almost ending and stuff. So he's like, yeah. I'm just going to make it. This is where I am. And that's about it. Jarek's now. General going to grab him, but... He still has the Hunter Knight, so whenever you use Cogs, he can just fly away. Well, there we have it. The Cogs are out, but it is... Oh, oh. he can't get himself out when it's when it's the daytime, and it he's gone. It is daytime. Yeah. Yep. Daytime arises, and Na'Vi jump in, pick up a second as Anna came across as well, trying to help out Jerax. And uh, very quick, needs two kills. And again, it's these, these movements from General, from Seneco, making a, a big impact for Na'Vi. And uh, making sure that they're able to slow down the pace a little bit. Still, though, bottom lane, Pycat. He's not having a whole world of fun oh, here. Oh man, I he's mean, in trouble. You, you said it, and uh, he is he's, he's dead. He is having a pretty sad time against the S4 bat. It's just too strong. Oh, they might continue as and well. And they're getting more of this. S4, he's got a buddy. He's got Jarex in town with him as well. The stick charges will keep them alive, though. And S4, looking to play his head with the TP out. Does he make it? Oh, the cog pushback is there. S4 will not survive as General turns up in town just in time. Great rotations coming up from General, just yeah. expecting the kind of movement from Jerex and then also from that aggression. They do they do still lose Pycat and during that mid tower is going to get pressured a bit. However, there is no Elder Dragon form because it was used as soon as uh, they went on to Jerex earlier with the Clockwork. So yeah, it's all about these yeah they, they, these movements from both sides, General and S4. The two offlaners trying to do what they can to really do it for the team. Obviously, still at the moment S4. With the lead, item wise, what 1500 gold, so not looking to invest into the drums first. We'll be hunting for that blink dagger straight up on the bat right of this game. And uh, as we've seen, you know, getting a, a few stickies on top of the troll and grabbing him in the fire flight, it puts Pycat in a whole world of pain. Yeah. Seneco, level six now, he's got the urn completed too, so he's actually farming very well on the wisp. Almost tied with his troll warlord, actually, so. But looking at looking at these OG wards, you can tell what their kind of game, game plan is. They want to play around the uh, bat rider. They want to play around the night stalker in that bottom lane, and just keep that aggression going. 
A mid lane. Anna being backed up once again by Fly, just in case anyone tries to make an attempt on him. You got a Rubik in the neighborhood, maybe seeing if uh, some experience can be picked up on this mid lane. Nice wave coming in for him. Said by for Will hanging around for that. Look, just hunting down for his level six. Yeah, DK doesn't want to be making the moves. He just wants to sit in that mid yeah. lane. Every time a Queen of Pain leaves, he's able to pressure that tower. So bottom, bottom lane. lane. They baited S4 in. Dendi's there with a the jump in in the backup, and they'll turn it around. Quickly done there by Na'Vi. As mm. soon as that's seen, No Tail rotates toward mid lane. Ana pops the dra Elder Dragon form, and they're going to start hitting this tower. But the rotation's now moving in from Na'Vi. They have relocated as well online. They could stop with this. Sonic Wave. Yeah, they've still got the quap hole. They could try and turn this, and they're going to go for it. But the telekinesis is on Tana. Now, No Tail reveals himself. Though. Oh no, Suneko! He relocates Pykan to the middle of the cooldown, but they will actually survive through that initial burst. And it's going to be able to drop Anna. Now, see if they can bring down the rest. Pykan falling incredibly low. Fly keeping No Tail and Jarrett alive. The heals there again. Fly will survive. Oh, gee, there. Being able to play around. A bit of an awkward uh, sort of attempt from Na'Vi to stop it as the, the relocate was straight into the cooldown. They they didn't expect to see Jaro just hanging on the sidelines. And No-Tail with the movement. And there we have it. The damage done indeed. 2.5k because of that relocate straight into the ultimate. Yeah, very nice rotation. He's got his drum finished up now too. He actually went for this 4-2-2 uh, build that I've seen people do in the past okay. too. So having that missile build to get the chase sound potential onto the Queen of Pain as well as the Troll Warlord. It's just more magic damage too onto Troll and... Pycat is definitely suffering in this game. He's only level 7, about to hit level 8, it's almost 12 minute mark. So he's pretty much the same as his, his IO still. Yeah. Suneko though, that being said, is having a little bit of a trade-off in that. Now the Sonic Wave is on cooldown, Elder Dragon form should be up a bit sooner than that. We'll probably see OG make a rotation toward either the safe lane or the mid lane again to try to pressure that tower while those ulti ultis are waiting. Yeah, I mean, the story really has been exactly as, as you expect. You know, S4 on the Batrider. You felt he was going to have a great time. And, I mean, yeah, he's died three times, but that's pretty much because the whole of Na'Vi have just had S4 on the mind. They, that's the hero they've been looking to punish when he goes for those plays. But still sitting very high in kills, very healthy in net worth. The, the uh, Blink Dagger's done, so we'll see if uh, they can make any sort of big play happen with that one. And top lane, Na'Vi looking for the objectives. Dendi and Snaker knocking onto the Tier 1. Uh, looks like uh, maybe a freebie here for them, which will be very nice for Na'Vi indeed, as OG showing no intention to come up here. They're actually moving around Na'Vi's jungle, trying to see if they can find a catch here, and they will find General. Opening up with the silence, S4 is in. Doesn't need to use the lasso straight away as General. Gets brought down low, tries to cogs to save himself, but the flame break there from S4 is back, holding General in position, allowing Jerax to get the final punches through. And a juicy double stack. That's oh, they like, the sack as well. There we yeah. have it. Hey, hey, hey. That's quite nice. And they take the mid tower. Bottom tower also got pressured. So again, No Tail always does this on yeah. this team. Like he was, he could have actually stayed bottom and probably pressured this because he actually wasn't needed in this rotation. But when he sees an engagement happening, he always TPs no matter what because you can't always know exactly what's going to happen in these type of fights. But this, this is the kind of player he is. This is what the role he does for this team. One well, in that time. Yeah, he's got to be so careful, and he was not careful enough. Straight in with the lasso. Cool hounds to follow through, and S4 giving Dondo the well played. Yeah, they lose, they lose Jarax mid, but that's some space right there if I've ever seen it. Wow! And man, as we saw there with the vision as well. As soon as that night time comes about, it's it's that and the bite. Uh, the, the bite stalker, the the the, the bat stalker, the night stalker, the bat stalker, the night, like the that. bat stalker, they, uh, the night rider. They, they, that combination of those two heroes is just so terrifying. Like, how do you even go out in a lane as as a quap or a, a troll? You're just gonna get jumped, yeah. especially with the, you know, the the vision control that the OG have on the map. It's yeah, it's they a actually, literal nightmare. They had deep wards pretty much all over the yep. place. Sonic Wave was still like on, getting off a of cooldown too, so they can always take advantage of that. Bottom lane, General. Looks yeah. like he's going to maybe be the next culprit. Calldown is on cooldown though. It looks like he'll be fine, yeah. With the, the backup TP's coming through, the cogs making it hard for OG to, to sell around for more. Both teams with three members down here on the bottom lane. Jarax, talking with the idea of going back in for a bit of harassment. Does have to be careful now. His, uh, his buddies have all left that side of the map and have left him alone. They might just shrine and make their way back down there. Looks like they're going to do like, maybe just stack once in between, but... Ana looks like Navi wants to set up for him. Saw some pings coming out. He does have an invis rune, though, so pretty hard to get him if they don't have reveal. And he's in a pretty defensive position as well. Yeah, once he uh, has that armlet as well, it's going to be very hard for Navi to, to bring down that DK with the tankiness he'll have. And he's pretty close to having that 2k gold towards the, 
beyond that. Oh, the beauty of playing. This was the, one of the things that kind of we were, a few people talked about in the patch notes, the 1250 range fly cannon. Oh, yeah. On the dire side, you can do all three camps actually with fly cannon. And not really farmed enough to be able to clear ancients just yet, but the potential is there for later on if he wants to do that. He's got his Yasha finished up soon. He's gonna be going for that SNY phase drum build, just full mobility. Mid lane, Anna. Ready to answer the call of Dendi and set up here for the Blink Lasso once again. S4's in there with the grab. Dendi's down. Bottom lane, General and Biver. Seeing if they can hunt for something, but oh no, General! He'll miss the hook shot. And Jerax, can he, he get so himself fly. out? Seneca's gonna come out with the back on the back up to see if they can set something up here. But the rest of OG, they're on their way down. S4's already there, laying up the sticky napalm. They've taken down Seneco. Biver will fall as well. And this game really is starting to look a little bit messy for Na'Vi. 15 for 9, OG with the lead, hitting the pace of the game that they want to. And it's it's looking to get increasingly harder for Na'Vi to stop or slow down. It's They can't get their troll involved in the game. No. Like, Dendi's trying to push lanes out as best as possible, but it's only him who really can. Like, Troll Lord shows in a lane and he's potential to die. Dendi shows in lane, potential to, very high potential to die, but that's also have to give a lot of credit to S4's positioning. He always seems to be in the right place at the right time yeah. to get those lassos as soon as he sees someone out of position. I mean, the S4 bat, we, we knew it was strong. And S4 giving us a very good demonstration. This game, why you should be very wary of letting this player grab this hero. Especially in this type of game, like yeah. it's the Batrider versus the Troll Warlord. This is why we've been seeing it. some teams like actually not really favor the Troll Warlord so highly, because people just pick Batrider versus it in the lane and just all this magic damage versus Troll Warlord makes him suffer so much. You can't get your BKB early. You have to get your like FaZe, your Vlads, your SNY, and then you double back for it. Maybe just a Yasha into the BKB, but even at that point, you need so many items that you are already at such a detriment. And here we go, OG now going for that efficiency, gonna stack up the triple. Absolutely, yeah, their, their farm is keeping them ahead indeed. And as you said, Pycat is climbing back. Yeah. You know, 6.2k, he is getting himself back there, but involved in farm is one thing. It's, it's as you mentioned, just getting involved in the fights is going to be quite another question. Yeah. Especially, yeah, with no tail closing in on the S and Y, the, the armlet now picked up by Anna, ready for the next fight. Team Ancients are here. Uh -huh. It is a PvE game after all. Seems like we're having some lag. Yeah, it looks like people are lagging with the way that they were kind of like moving. Notel was like stuck, <coughs> walked. He just stood still for a couple seconds before attacking. So, some slight lag issues, but... How are we doing on Biver? Zero five. Yeah, he's been struggling a lot on this Rubik every time he shows. But that's kind of to be expected when you're playing with uh, with Io. You know, the Io needs to have his like, game pretty much perfectly given to him. He wants to have a mech very early. And Rubik versus like Rubik Troll versus Batrider Night Stalker, it's just extremely difficult. Even though the mm. Night Stalker started mid, these type of rotations just come naturally for Night Stalker, and Rubik gets punished. Yeah, I mean, and what, what what is Navi's best bet for for sort of getting back into this one? What what do they need to look to to try and shoot? Is there a certain item that's going to be able to change kind of the tone of this game? I mean, the big one is definitely the. BKB on the troll. Maybe mm -hmm. the mech on the wisp could actually uh, have like a decent factor, but I still don't see them really being able to just take a 5v5 fight. They can go for some like pick-off type of things, but taking just straight-up fights versus this Dazzle, Gyro, DK, the, those three cores right there, those three, they have a lot of sustain and just so much potential in the team fights. Maybe when some blade mail clockwork as well could be a little bit of a driving factor, but they need to kind of have everything come out at the exact same time. If they get in, if Navi gets initiated on, it's an absolute disaster. If Navi maybe gets initiation and the Batrider isn't there at the exact moment, that's when they can kind of come out. I mean, do you think in retrospect as well, was there anything that Navi could have done better in that safe lane to stop themselves dying to the S4 Batrider? I mean, it, was it just a, in terms of play, they they got to be more careful with the positioning, or would you have liked to see maybe Seneco put more attention towards the bottom lane earlier on rather than looking to help out Dendi on the Quop DK matchup? Probably a bit, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like having him have an early TP, but he went for like the boots build, right? He went for boots, then he went into bottle, so he yeah, couldn't have yeah, a TP. That, that, yeah, yeah, he doesn't have yeah. that type of slot. He was yeah. trying to go for the efficiency thing and to just have them heavily punish Ana, but Ana came out perfectly fine. You know, Dendi went for that dive onto the tower. He got solo killed, which like pretty much almost counteracted all the things that they did in that mid lane. So that one death was actually quite large for himself, uh, for Dendi, and to bring back Ana. But yeah, I think he sh if he could have tried to help a little bit more bo bottom, we wouldn't be seeing this happen. Like S4 is. No, he's, he's everywhere in this six, game. Three, five. Yeah, he's uh, up and down, always there with the jump-ins. And, and as we mentioned, just 
the synergy between him and Jarex's Night Stalker incredibly good against these these heroes. But the Queen of Pain, I mean, Dendi is so so vulnerable. One silence, one lasso, and there's no hope yeah. for Dendi in these fights. He's trying to get himself a BKB online, uh, but he's still a fair way away indeed. And uh, yeah, we want to go do do apologise for these pauses. Looks like we are having some some brief, hopefully, internet issues. OG still very much in the game there. As for the man himself. As uh, we've been talking about, all looking very focused. They may have the lead at the moment, but still definitely a game that, that things could turn on their heads. Pycat has got the farm. He's catching back up. One good fight for the troll. Uh, could bring him into a very, very powerful position. And uh, definitely the, the chance for the troll to outscale the gyro in the long run. Yeah. If Na'Vi can can pull it off and, and get this game to the later stages. He's still like, he does, look, in, in order for Troll Warrior to really be in, be in these fights at all, he needs a BKB so badly. It's like, it, if anything, it's like the Clockwork has to get like a perfect initiation for him to really do damage in this fight. Because if he walks in, there's so much like, Patience just damage on the floor. You know, Firefly's going to be around, Sticky suffer, makes you suffer pretty hard, Call Down. There's just so many different things. Even the Weave can help a lot versus the Troll Warlord because then yeah. your damage potential is super uh, hindered. And then once, let's say, like these like Medallions and Solar Crest start coming out too for OG, it's going to make him... Make his life even harder. Holy, these pings. Oh my god. Who's pinging? It's Anna. Is it Anna? Anna is just called out. Mashing Exposed. the pings right now. Anna, stop <laughs> pinging, please. Uh, uh, Anna and No Tell there with the, the charges. They always do this. A bit of a smile there from they Dendy. Well, it's like, you know. Yeah, they're still feeling, I mean. Dendy, you know, he's confident. Yeah. He's like, we got this. Still feeling he's okay. Fine. You know, he's had a couple deaths, but. Yeah. It's just really like OG's had much cleaner like five man movements yeah. than Navi has so far at this point. Navi's had a couple like nice rotations with like two or three heroes, but OG as a whole has moved four or five heroes multiple times in a much better uh, much better unison. Pycat here. Discussing strats. How could your lip reading fog? Patience from Zoe. With Pycat, it's kinda tough. He could be speaking a couple languages. He could be doing some accents. Cat, he Who can knows? speak a million languages. <laughs> that he's a bit of a madman. Pycat. He can do everything. Let's see, OG. Oh, gee. Not, they don't oh, talk. Fly. Oh, he said oh. something. He said, he said, stop pinging. He said, don't be oh. a baby. As uh, our man Seneco doing it lazy boy style. Up All right. he gets. Anna, get. Anna drew the line down mid. Oh, he so drew the line down mid. He's ready. He's ready. <laughs> Seneco's ready. The headset is on. Hey, are you ready? Yeah, boy. Jarex, he's done with this. Jarex's like, are you kidding me? He's still thinking I just about, want to play Night He's still thinking about that yours play from yesterday. He's like, <laughs> <sighs> well, I'll enjoy my last land with OG. He's building Tor Halberd on the uh, Night Stalker. This is going to be extremely good versus Tor Warlord. Yeah. He's pretty much their only oh, physical. Oh, yeah, Halberd is just... Queen of Pain, Queen of Pain delivers a bit of physical damage chunk, but you know, sure. once Troll gets, yeah, yeah. Troll gets Halberded, that's yeah. going to make it really his life... Pretty difficult, and also I, I believe like DK Dragon Knight might even go for one himself. Like Blink Armlet and it's not bad, Halberd, yeah. it's very That's, strong. Yeah, if you you got that Halberd after Halberd, it, it causes a lot of issues. OG seems to be like also kind of content with the like the game, the pace of the game kind of slowing down because they have this flash farming gyrocopter, and they already have they have not I only mean, the get both ancients, both ancients being yeah. stacked ridiculously yeah. by a. Uh, by OG, that, yeah, that's quite quite something. That Two triple ancients. Yep. Ana can even farm it himself too with the Elder Dragon. Do we have any stacks 12. from Navi? Have they been stacking their ancients at all? I guess they don't really have anyone to clear them. Yeah, they had yeah. they had normal stacks, but yeah. that yes, gank that happened yeah. from OG ended up stealing their stacks. So yeah. it was like they kind of gave OG a little bit more farm at that. It looks like they're discussing item builds actually during this. Yeah, oh, I, 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 Pycat just switched his stuff. He had a uh, oh. he had S and Y BKB queued up. Now he has the Manta style queued up. So. Into the minds of OG and Navi here during Strats. this downtime pause. Strats. Strats. S4 pause. communicating with the captain. Smile out from Fly here. Dandy back to serious mode. We did see a smile from Dandy earlier. No, he's done with that. He's done with the smiling. The games like, are over. He's like, wait, look where I am bottom. <sighs> am I, can I get ganked here? Oh, God. No one's near me. Am I going to get ganked? See. Do we know, actually? Do I, does Biver speak Ukrainian and Russian? Uh, I don't know if he speaks. I know he's Romanian. Is he Romanian? He's Romanian, yeah. His English... Remember we had him on Dream League one of the times? His English was really good. Biver's English was very good. I just wonder yeah, how they communicate. Biver or Beaver? Remember? He said he doesn't care. He either. said he doesn't care. He said he like, call if you want to call him Beaver, you can call him Beaver. Bi Beaver, Biver, he it said... It was super chill. Really nice yeah, lad was. on the interview. Very We're like, nice lad. Slacks was bugging him the whole time, too. Yeah. He's like, oh, what do you want to be called? Do you want to be called this or this or this? And he's like, it's up to your interpretation. Yeah, and we're like, oh. He's a nice lad. Oh, man. General, the Arcana Thief. 
these pings. He's just mashing pings, drawing circles. Is, is it still Anna mashing it's, these pings? It's Anna. He's, ma he's now pinging Biver. <laughs> he's pinging Biver. He's like, he's fate bolting the creep wave. He's Jarex is, the creep he's wave. done with that. He's just like, <sighs> Yeah, he's Come actually on, telling him. Guys, Look, this is a serious tournament. So we haven't gotten another update. We haven't. People, it's, it's, so we're we fixing the know. internet. Some internet issues. We seems are, like some lag. Yes, it'll be soon. Seems like the uh, the other series as well. I saw LFY were talking about some like Kale, so they were definitely saying that there was some lag going on. So maybe yeah. it's just some light like, disruption issues. There we go. The the ROTK soundbite coming out there from Matt. Mm -hmm. Very nicely done. Nicely placed. Okay. okay. So, so yeah, but just an update. We we are waiting. Uh, OG with the the packet loss issue. Uh, Navi's internet though, on the other hand, is fine. So at least that that means it should be a localized issue that we should be able to fix. As uh, Soneko setting in for the night, head on the table. Time to say resident sleeper to all this all, and off he goes. General. How's General doing? We've seen some nice clock rotations from him. He's lots of rotations. Lots of, rota so lots his of rotations. Farm, his well. farm is definitely sure. being hindered from that. Like yeah. He had very early TPs toward the bottom lane. I think the big thing is also that they've already taken that tier 2 bottom. Uh, OG took the tier 2 in the safe lane, and they took the mid one, so the access points into the enemy jungle are a lot easier than... Uh, Navi's. There's Anna. Smile is on. He's, he's like, they're look competing. guys, they're I'm competing. pinging. They're oh, competing they're both and pinging. Pings. They're both pinging and you can't even hear it they're anymore. They're both pinging so fast. It's, oh, who, who's competing? Anna and... It's Anna and Jarex. Anna and Jarex here with the ping off. Oh! You can barely even hear it. Oh, no, oh, it Anna gives up. Has he given up? Who's given up? Anna, I think Anna tapped out. Jarex won. No, now they're, now they're continuing. Oh, they're back on. New tower. Anna versus Jarex. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Jarex in with the patience. There's a couple of those as well. That's a plus 50 points. Oh, that beat. Fat beat there from Anna. Is that Anna? It's Anna. That's Anna. It's definitely Anna. <laughs> Frustration is shown. I mean, the pings are coming through, so the internet can't be that bad. He must have a... Uh... It looked like it was No-Tail, mostly lagging. I don't know if it's like okay. all of them, but I know No-Tail was the one who said it, and he looked like he was lagging, because he missed a stack actually during that, but... Dendi, contemplating life. Ooh, oh, hello. There we go. Goodbye. Giving us the eyes there. Very nice there. <laughs> Young Daniel. Jarex. It looks like he's lost it there. Starting to mutter to himself. The lip reading fogged. Here we go. Into play. Every time they, they stop. They know we're watching. It's, it's too hard. They can't reveal their it's strats. It's way too difficult, They've got to save their strats here for the episode of main event. There we go. Seneco. Day 56 of game one. Here we go. It's alright, Seneko. Oh, we're back in! Go try. Oh, Seneko, wake up! Wake up, Seneko! You gotta play, son! We're back in. Back to the ancient farming. Back to farming. Back to farming, just as we like it with OG. And there we have it, back in. Dendi, Ogre Club picked up on the ways to BKB. Cam stack, there we have it. Beautiful stat, and indeed, 5-5-5. Five, five, five. So 15 stacked in total for the boys. And, uh, oh, interesting. Both teams with the same amount of camp stacks as they've got killed. That is fascinating. Nice. OG's farmed a little, or stacked a little bit more ancients, though, so they've definitely come out ahead. Of, and they stole, I believe, one or two from Navi, so slight advantage for them. Well, top lane, the scam will connect. They're trying to do a relocate game. Oh, Viper, like here. this is a little bit risky, Sonny Jim. There will be a relocate coming through, but Viper's already dead. Can Dendi, Pycan, and Seneca turn it around? They'll look towards Anna, but oh, that force in the grave there from Fly to save Anna. He'll be A-OK. -okay. Seneca should be able to bring Dendi back out of this in time. Unless he dies, no, he's fine. The re-relocate will get him out. There's a missile coming in, though. No tail and S4 inbound. They're going for Pycan. Oh, they're looking for him. They've got him. S4 grabs him back with the lasso. Again, the combinations there. There with the cooldown from No Tail. And they'll get themselves the big old kill. Bottom lane, Jerax. Turn around with Dendi. Oh, that missile. missile's still coming in from earlier. <laughs> oh. Bang on there. Jerax actually <laughs> almost caught the uh, IO on the relocate back. He TP'd bottom right away and was trying to make a movement there. Great, ah. great defensive TPs though coming out from OG. Yeah, Instantly nice. noticing that they had, you know, they had the two man there, so they saw the reaction. Hey, General, looking to see if he can step onto No Tail. It would be nice. No Tail doesn't have the ultimate. There we have it. The rocket barrage into Blade Mail, bringing him down. Now the hook shot connects. No way he misses that one. Fly is in the neighborhood. And in fact, the heal and the weave, enough to get No Tail out of there. And stop the two of them going for more. Between the Rubik and the clock, they just don't have the damage to bring No-Tail down from 100 to 0. That was very nice reactive movements coming out from OG. The defensive force staff, both from uh, 
S4 and the Grave coming out from Fly. And that's that's really big though for them because they're not as ulti reliant as comparison to Navi for the team fight. Sure, they need like Lasso to get pickoffs and whatnot, but they only need really like nighttime to kind of make goes because of their the strength of their lineup. And when Sonic Wave is down, that's when it's go time for them. Yeah. They've got know. Blink now finished for Ana too, so he's got that extra kind of catch. Yeah, it's, it's, it's becoming increasingly hard enough for Dendi and Pycat to really do anything. What One sort of blink initiation, whether it be a stun or the lasso, and their fight starts to fall apart. S4 does have to be a little careful here. Three members of Na'Vi around in the neighborhood. Uh, TPs are coming in from OG. They get themselves to give up on the top lane. Pycat's just still completely on recovery mode. He's just like, I need to make space, I'm farming, yeah. I need to get this item. But yeah, and that's definitely the right thing for, for, for Pycat to do yeah. at this stage. And I think, you know, probably one of those talks that they were having during that downtime was going to be what was the plan to, to getting Pycat back in here. And yeah, so with the item build queued up, Manta, Blink, and BKB being the, the path he wants to take. So very defensive. It's something that's just going to allow him to give a bit of a give him a bit of a chance in these fights. Four minutes of night time just cut, start kicking in, so it's going to be OG going to see some more buildings. Ultimates are ready for both teams now, but it looks like OG is actually going to be able to pressure two lanes here or two towers here. The defense actually is already being set up right now from No Tail and S4. S and Y finished up on No Tail on the gyrocopter. S4 in position to grab anything. No, and very, very, scared. very tanky at this stage of the game, no tell. You know, this is Relocate. prime time. Phase drums and SMY, and indeed. See, top lane as well. In fact, General does get the hook shot onto Anna. Denti's there. Also, Jerex trying to see if he can do anything to hold them back from the DK, but he can't. That's going to be Anna gone. Now, if he was a very big kill. Bottom lane, Seneco is it going to make it. Lasso's there to hold him back, and they will punish the IO. But overall... Getting that kill onto the DK, Na'Vi will take that trade. Yeah, definitely. I believe the IO actually finished up his mech as well after getting that kind of kill. So, very very fast relocate coming out and Ana just getting a little bit a little bit out of position just trying to make the like, cut across and his team was just slightly delayed yeah. to kind of help him Viver now. Yeah, Jax has got eyes on him and yeah. it's been, as you mentioned earlier, just a tough game to be a Rubik. There's a lot of ways that OG just run it yet, and you can't do anything. He doesn't really have that great of spells to steal either this game. Like, he can get the weave. That's probably one of the better ones he can actually do. Call down would be great, but stealing spells from Gyrocopter, you're not really going to get always what you want. And again, I mean, Jarex just opening up here with a quick void and crippling fear. The three of them surround the clockwork, take him down. So they could try to come in with a tether mech to, to save him. But it's just not enough against the damage that OG have at this stage of the game. 22 minutes just running down the lanes. And looking to claim the tier two in the middle, which that, they should do with relative ease. That nighttime and that kind of vision advantage, like we were talking about earlier, their warding has been very aggressive overall. And then after they took that tier one top, they put a. I guess that's where Ana was getting caught. The last uh, engagement that happened, it was Jarex and him running through and putting down ward vision. But that ends up benefiting them here in the future, get, being able to claim this tier two without having to actually use Elder Dragon form. They even place another deep ward too to watch the movement coming out from Navi. And they're getting pretty big items now coming out from OG. As we mentioned, you know, the SNY for the gyro was finished already. He gets now that level 15, so he gets some more magic, or he gets some more damage. And on his way toward BKB, Jarex, I believe, has Halberd almost done. So itemization is looking pretty good for OG. But Pycat is slowly, you know, still slowly but surely keeping up. He's almost got that Manta style finished up, but he still doesn't have the tools to be able to fight into the side of yeah. OG. And it's, it's going to remain a, a long point in this game where, you know, one misstep from Pycat in the fight and he will be gone. He's got to be so careful with the amount of lockdown and control that OG have up top. Biver, a bit of a risky position there. We'll be able to TP out, though, without OG getting their eyes on him. Ana used the Dragon Form super early to push the wave in. He wants to just go f deep onto this tier 2. Just yeah, brute we'll force it. See what kind of response Na'Vi come in, or indeed they'll, they'll just again, they'll let this go. It's already too low. Pycat remaining in the mid lane, trying to get some... Pressure in return onto that mid tier one, but now he's being hunted. The knight comes out. Jarax looking to close the gap here. Pycat is being backed up by General though. And General will go with the cog play. Holds them back, gets himself out of the initial cooldown. The slow will still be there though. And S4, here he comes. Blinks across, gets the lasso. Once again, it's another grab for the bat. Seneco as well. He used the relocate to bring Pycat out, and he's gonna be another dead dead culprit. I'm really really is continuing to just go the way in OG pretty much in every sense. The lanes are being pushed, the farm is being got, the kills are being had. 
RV. The way that they're the way that OG's defending towers is just really nice to see and really like important. It's not like you see like one hero porting in the front and then like someone else ports afterwards. No, it's no tail usually TP's in the front line and S4 is already kind of on rotation with Jarex and they get those kind of pickoffs because of the increased mobility from drums. Albert already finished up now onto Jarex, so that's a pretty tough thing to troll to, for troll to actually deal with. Yeah. And I believe Absolutely. Solar Crest almost done on the Dazzle too, so it's gonna be Pretty hard for him to actually be able to deal damage in these engagements whenever he wants to get involved. And just because of how the early game went, it just feels like OG, the, the whole lineup is, is constantly a, a, a full item ahead. Yeah. And an item ahead that's incredibly painful for Na'Vi's cause to deal with. Yeah, it just seems like when Na'Vi doesn't have Sonic Wave up, it's like they're like, we cannot fight at all. We just have to avoid and split push. But then they get caught out by like one or two heroes. Now they have everything up. They've, They've got, got to the do fresh something BKB. big with this. They yeah. have to make something happen with this smoke. If this fight goes bad, I don't know what Na'Vi's plan is going to be. Well, it's going to be dropped, General. We'll come with a hook shot, but Anna, he's got a lot of backup behind him. They'll get a good cogs to split him away, but the Grave, the cast range is still there. Anna will be kept alive for a little bit. But he's, can they get him out yet with the heal and the shrine? I think he's going to be okay initially. And he will. No tails there. Oh. Drops the cooldown. Forces them to back up. General goes for the TP out. Is he going to make it? He's not. They'll bring down the clockwork. Jump forward to take down Soneko as well. And it just isn't working out for Na'Vi. That grave. And then he yeah. Arna the, turning the, his the armlet off. The range, yeah. Yeah. Armlet tur he turns his armlet off during the grave. And then as soon as the grave is about to run out, he turns it back on. So he gets like this like double kind of heal, it looks like. And then with the shrine coming in afterwards, S4 did last one illusion, but at that point, Navi had already put all their focus fire onto this DK, and they weren't able to bring, bring him, bring, being able to bring him down. Sonic Wave wasn't committed either because of the grave. Yeah, it, it was a good attempt from Navi, you know, generals play as well to just split the DK as far away as he can from the dazzle. But yeah, yeah that, that level four shallow grave, the the range is is going to be able to do it over the cogs. Just you know, only just about as long as Fly can get into position, and of course, if if anyone's going to get themselves into the right position on Dazzle, it, it is going to be Fly. Yeah, no tail even now. So he disassembled his S and Y into a halberd, and now okay, he went back. <laughs> I was like, whoa, he went for a halberd on Gyrocopter. That's interesting. But now he's just going to be cal uh, okay. passive talisman is quite good. Mid lane, Dandy, caught out. Oh my goodness! Down. There's just too much damage to to bring him out through that stunt. This no way that he can react, and uh, yeah, he's gone for 45. No buyback on this Queen of Pain, and OG, I think they realize that as they are ready to try and break the high ground of Na'Vi. The increased sustain from the Dazzle, from the Urn Charges. They just, yeah, Troll still can't really get into the fights properly, though, versus all this. He's trying to get the split push going, though, with the DD. Let's see how much he can do. Indeed, that, that tier 2 will fall, but uh, he's losing a tier 3 himself, Pika, that is going to inevitably be that point where Pycat has to turn up to the fight. Mid lane, they're not only losing a tower, they're looking to lose a Rax as well. OG, they stand strong, clear out the melee Rax, and nothing that Na'Vi can do to stop with it. And expecting the fact that they just can't fight without their full lineup. Denji's going to be back in a couple of seconds. Bottom lane, the relocate is there to save the troll, bring him back to base. Mid lane, they will go for the hook shot. They do get the connection onto Fly, but Anna's there with the response, jumping past the clockwork, looks towards Biver, takes down the Rubik. And Anna just being this frontliner that we've Bama starting to stack up 41, 42. I'm no way that Navi can go in on that DK. As once again they're held back. And they just can't punish it. They, they can't seem to find any sort of trade now with the deficit they have in terms of just net worth and, and the heroes they're playing, as you said. Th there was always going to be worries with this sort of draft and, and we're pretty much seeing all of the issues that, that was expected to, to come through with this lineup coming out this game. Yeah, I mean, it's the, the troll war that just takes a long time to get online and they punished him super hard in the laning phase. And then Gyrocopter <laughs> flash farms just way harder. Just lots of different things, just the better moves coming up from OG over all this game. Just much cleaner team movement rather than like one or two people as I mentioned previously. And now they've got the Solar Crest finish, so they've got hard kind of counters in a way to the Troll Warlord. And he's still not even, he's still quite a ways away from that BKB, about 1400 gold for him to get that. And that's, I mean, once he gets the BKB, that could be one of the big factors for him to actually get into the fights. But that being said, he's now playing versus Halberd on it. Night Stalker, I keep seeing No-Tail disassemble his S and Y into a Halberd in the middle of like, the fights and stuff. Next and now is he actually doing that? That was yeah, pretty next it, level. He yeah. did it like twice when just they were pushing the, the base. Yeah, he didn't even use it, but it was just like okay. to have that. I guess just like have that threat there. 
But yeah, like this, everything is just starting to build up. The massive amount of armor on the DK with Weave as well, etc. So many different things to kind of deal with what Navi can put out. What you looking at? Much crisper with this type of lineup than they did yesterday, that's for sure. When they have this like gyro DK natural pushing lineup. Yeah, and, and as we saw, just having the, the Batrider you know, S4 and uh, the back with Jarex and Night Stalk in the laning stage was in incredibly brutal. Yeah. I mean, their, their vision as well in this game has been very good. They've always had deep wards, so they're watching Navi's movements, kind of predicting like and expecting where they're going to make like the relocate games. They haven't really given Navi much chances to get those relocates. So they're playing against the Wisp also very well. Since it is a first two pick Wisp, like, one of the old kind of approaches to deal with the Wisp was you pick this like five man centric lineup and that's exactly what OG's been executing and doing this majority of this game. That's interesting as well. OG, they have two couriers at the moment working for themselves. They do have two couriers. I'm not quite sure when that was picked up or... I didn't see it either. I feel like there's no... Is there any need at the moment? Maybe there was a time when they... I don't think the courier's been killed this game, has it? They needed to get anything out of emergency? I don't think so. Nice. Well, that happened. Oh, there we go. Double okay. courier action from OG this game. I'll ask them later. <laughs> Dragonite now finished up another halberd. And they're going to find Pycat. This is the man that's been farming all game, trying to get himself back into this. Can they bring him down? There will be the IO tethering across, but all oh, no, he's, he's too far apart. Pycat's gone. They do end up losing S4 on the Batrider, but the rest of OG are looking to chase down for more. Biver's taken down as Anna picks up the double kill. Suneko being pursued by Jerax Fly and No Tail. He's going to be taken down as well as Na'Vi lose three. Once again, and as we saw there, Pika relentlessly, he's been farming all game, trying to get himself back in, but still, if OG get a quick jump on him, he has no way of reacting to that sort of damage and potential that they have. They tried to relocate him out, but S4, yeah. very good with like the vision advantage from the Night Stalker. Like, uh, Jerax actually ran in with Hunter the Knight, and S4 was able to like four step in, and Ewell's cancel the relocate coming out. So, any type of save potential that Navi was trying to do there was completely disrupted by S4 and Jerax. So just great spell usage by them there, and just constantly keeping the aggression. There we go. A second set of racks being taken out by OG. He's got the Halberd again now, uh, disassembled for Gyrocopter. Oh, General does get the hook shot in, ready to go. No tail pops the BKB, turns around with the cooldown. Pinecat himself does have the BKB ready to go as well. So they look towards Jarax. Jarax falling over the armor, keeping him alive massively. No tail is going to be able to find the kill on Survivor. And now the rest of Navi being forced back to base. Dendi can't make it away. The Dragon Tail's there from Anna, takes down a couple. There's three more die on Navi. The Ooh, bottom rats clean up and GG. You've got to tap out of that stage. You know, he gets, you can see, like, he gets the BKB there and then he can actually try to stand toe to toe and kind of fight. But at this point, they're all just way too tanky, way too over leveled, over farmed. Yeah. He's just able to not really do anything versus this weave and double halberd, solar crest, etc. They just had the, pretty much all the plans to kind of deal with this wisp troll opening. It seemed like OG, oh, the rest of their five picks were exactly to kind of deal with that. And you can see how it, how it pretty much played out. Yeah, uh, I think as you said from the start, as you said, just really smart draft from OG, Na'Vi yeah. with a few, you, you as you said, you're not a huge fan of kind of what running the Rubik and the